if you're looking for a queen, you got to be a king. Mm-hmm. You got to make sure you're a king. You got to make sure you're whole, right? So you got to make sure you got everything together. Like, and when you're looking for a person, you should want them. You should need them. I always say that, and it's a difference. I should, anytime a woman tell me I need a boyfriend or I need a man, I'm like, you don't need a man. You need to work on yourself. Mm. I say the same thing with my, my fellas. Man, I need a girl. No, you don't need. Mm. Now you will want to have somebody to share something with. I right. get that. You will want to have a companion. But if you are whole and you're happy within, you don't need anything except water and air. Welcome to Hardly Initiated. It is your host, Tyshawn Jackson. Here with another episode, my co-host, Ryan Ketches. I like that intro, man. You, yeah. you feeling it today? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Hype. I feel that smooth. Hype. I love that. Turned it on. And look, hey, listen, this brother here telling me that was a good intro. It means a lot. Uh-huh. Qualified. Okay? Uh-huh. Means a lot, y'all. I'm excited to bring y'all this brother here in this episode today mm-hmm. because we are bringing here, man, y'all probably seen his face here, man. This is 29 <laughs> years yeah. of experience. This brother has been hosting some of the, I mean, most popular television shows that we've been seeing on, I mean, Fox, you talking about Fox Sports, you yeah. talking about ESPN, yeah. I mean, you talking Fox Soul, the brother mm-hmm. has literally made his rounds on television and TV, and today, he's here with Harley Initiated, and I mean, let me not even, let, let me back up a little bit, mm-hmm. a father. Yes, absolutely, an my author. best title, yes. Yes, yes. and you know, our audience probably even knows you, because we got a big audience of ladies, yeah. our audience mm-hmm. probably knows you, because you were just in a pretty high profile relationship Absolutely, yeah. with uh is it former or current housewife Cynthia Bailey? A former housewife, but yeah, yeah. But she's uh, she's a she's a housewife legend. Cynthia yeah, Bailey. She is. She's definitely. an icon. Yeah. She is. Yeah. And look, it's a blessing to bring to bring your knowledge and wisdom here and share with the audience audience today. We are here rocking with Mike. Heal. What's Welcome up, fellas, show. man? Thanks for having me on, appreciate man. Appreciate you, man. Appreciate that. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. The yeah. voice is legendary, man. Uh, yeah. Thank, yeah. You. thank <laughs> you so much, man. Appreciate it. That's crazy how you introduced me because, like, when people come up to me and, like, what? Where well, I know you from? Yeah. I've mean, yeah, never seen you. Are you on TV? And I'm like, yeah. I'm like, but what, where is it? So when if it's a man, I will like, well, you know, I do a little sports, you know, do an ESPN maybe or something like that. If it's a black one, I'm like, no, you don't know me. You know my ex-wife. <laughs> <laughs> that's a fact. That, that's it. That's a Cynthia Bailey. You know, but uh, what's crazy is sometimes, you know, I get fooled because there's a lot of women who obviously watch sports too. And they've yeah. seen me. I've been on Netflix. I've done some acting here and there too. So I'm trying to be multi-platformish. Yeah. yeah. I like that. And yeah. which brings you here to Harley Initiated. And here. I'm happy to be here. Now I'm on with you guys, man. Happy to be here, man. Love your show. Man, it's, it's, a, it's a blessing to, to hear you say that. Um, today we're going to have a really good conversation because, you know, right now we're in a, we, you know, we're in the trenches of a weird culture right now that has a very unique relationship with marriage. Mm-hmm. Um, our relationship with marriage, I think, is just overall as a culture traumatized mm-hmm. on both ends for men and women. And, you know, when you look at the statistics on marriage, it's a lot of reason for that. And just in general, when you look at the media as it portrays marriage, it's, it's you know, not sexy. No. And I mean, you personally have a lot of experience. I think <laughs> a lot of experience. <laughs> <laughs> I think you, you, you've been married is it three times? Three now. times, man, and three times. And so I'm I'm part of the statistics on the good way because you know, hey, black men will get married, but then black men will get divorced or people mm. get divorced. So I try. I'll just say that. And um, I told you before the interview that I've I've had a lot of ups and downs and learning. And, and some good times, some bad times, or whatever. And I'm getting better. Uh, still haven't figured it out yet in, in every aspect. But um, uh, relationships in, in any uh, circumstance are, are complicated. Yeah. Uh, professional relationships, personal relationships. And uh, so, yeah, the media can portray, portray it one way. Um, the, the television shows, movies can portray it another way. And we were talking about how uh, it, it was. Uh, back in the day in the 50s and 60s, how grandma and granddaddy still together and how they stayed together through everything now and what's the reason why people aren't staying together now. So it's a lot of complexities when it comes uh, to marriage. But I am somebody who is, I am pro-marriage. If you can find the right person, you don't have to find a perfect person. You just got to find somebody who's perfect for you or you think is perfect for you and and work it out and try and work through your things. Now, um, obviously, uh, I haven't been able to work through my things or whatever, <laughs> Some because of, you know, uh, a lot of the issues which I take full accountability for uh, in my past about some of the things I went through in my first marriage, especially. Um, But in the last one, you know, it's just issues you just kind of figure out 
uh, over a period of time that, okay, well, it just might not be for you with this particular person, so you're trying to stay happy. You know, that's and that's, that. the, I want to I wanna, I wanna kind of go into that, but first I want to ask, with somebody, I mean, I, I hear people talk about just how draining the process of divorce is yeah. and just how that could just take a toll on your stamina yeah. of, you know, f- future relationships, but after you've been through, you know, your third divorce, do you, are you still hopeful mm. that you'll find or can be in another marriage or right now you like that marriage right now, I'm, I'm good on it. <laughs> and you know, we gonna just kind of keep it casual. You know what's crazy is after the first two, I was like, I'm done, never again. <laughs> I'll never, the first one I was like, man, if I used to tell my friends, man, if you ever hear me say I'm getting married again, just go ahead and take me out. <laughs> just go ahead and put one right in the temple because this ain't me. This is mm-hmm. some alien that's taking on my body. Yeah. But you know, you find the right person and you, like you said, you think it's the right person at the time and uh, you go for it. You take chances in life. It's almost like if you get a house and you know, gets foreclosed the first time, it burns down the second time, you see a dream house the third time, you ain't gonna rent, you just buy it. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? If you can, yeah. if you can afford it at that particular time, man. So. What I say to that is like, I, I'm i not going to make the same mistake I made the first two times after my divorces and say that I will never get married again. Even though there are a lot of people out there who are in my comments on social media, just don't get married, marriage ain't for you. No, that's not true. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it, it, it could be for me with the right person and it could be for Cynthia. I mean, she's going through her second divorce now with the right person. And it doesn't mean that the person that you married is a bad person or you know, that person isn't good for marriage or whatever, it just mean, meant that they weren't right for each other. So I'm open to it. I'm open to finding, but I'm not searching. I'm not looking to get married again. I'm not looking to be in a strong a relationship. But if it happens to happen, I'm preparing myself to be a whole man to make sure that, you know, I don't make some of the same mistakes I made before. And the person I'm with, I got to make sure that they're a whole person as well and they don't come in with certain baggages that could um, affect us in our relationship. Now, between those three relationships, those three um, marital relationships that you had, was there some, you know, underlying issue or was it, well, was the issues the same or did Mm. they vary from marriage to marriage? They varied. I mean, like, well, I've been very open about this and, you know, I know a lot of people, like like you say, you have a large female audience and they'll be like, well, you got him on the show because he's cheating. You know, I, I, I understand the term cheater. I get it. And I understand the visceral reaction that women have when you have admitted that in the past you've cheated in your relationships. I didn't cheat in all my relationships. That was misunderstood. People can say that he's a cheater. Everyone in his relationship, and it gets blown out of proportion and whatnot. As a matter of fact, the majority of the relationships I've been in, I did not cheat. You know what I mean? I didn't do that. But uh, being married my first time, my first relationship, obviously there was something that happened where you know I was young and not making any excuses full accountability, not being a man, not being taught how to love a woman because I wasn't in love with myself, not being in love with a woman, but loving the woman because I wasn't in love with myself and didn't know who I was. Uh, but over a period of time, you gotta you learn, you know what I mean? So to answer your question, uh, the first one was cheating, the second one eventually led to something, but there are other circumstances that were involved or whatnot, but that wasn't the reason we got a divorce. Got it. And in the third one with Cynthia, there was no cheating whatsoever. There was nothing that happened that caused us to get a divorce because of some kind of infidelity. There was no infidelities whatsoever. Uh, But the common thing was just like, I think for me, what I realized is a part of healing that has to happen, a part of being a whole person that has to happen before you enter into a relationship with anybody. And that goes for anybody out there. You have to not necessarily just be whole, but you have to make sure that the baggage that you took from your past and your traumas from your past, you cannot bring into this future relationship and put it on the shoulders of your significant other because it shouldn't be theirs to carry. Now they can help you get through it if you are trying to get through it, but if you have baggage from your past relationships, that means any kind of traumas where you are just triggered by certain things that may happen and the person that you're with is totally innocent, but you're just affected by it because you're not totally healed, that is going to affect your relationship. And, you know, like, I don't want to get into full details about what exactly happened in my last relationship, but that had a major factor uh, in, in what happened with Cynthia and I. I think a lot of a lot of men experience that, even when, you, when it comes to dating. Like, I've had women to say, hey, you know, the reason I respond this way because it reminded me of this. 
And one of the things I think was like, okay, well, I understand that, but why is your reaction to the same level of severity as if I actually was the person who did this negative thing? Right. So, you know, it, it's, it's tricky when it comes to that. But speaking about cheating, right, because one of the things that I feel like is, ha happens when uh, a woman gets called cheating versus a man gets called cheating, mm. there seems to be some level of protection or understanding that people have if a woman gets called cheating. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, well, if she went cheating, <laughs> what did the man do right you know right. did he do this was he taking care of this you know right. do you think that um mm. if the shoes i mean i guess the shoes on the other foot do you think the man can also cheat not just from lusting from a woman but because he's um he experiencing some level of neglect yeah I, I, that's I, and i've wrote about this in my my second my book was my, my second marriage that was that was the case you know what i mean it was like i felt like and you know, once again, there is no excuse. And I want—I don't know what my camera is. There is right. absolutely <laughs> no excuse for a man to cheat. I take full accountability for anything that I've done in my past, my relationships, and I've also gone out and I've apologized to every woman that I've cheated on because I know that brings them a certain level of trauma. And once again, what I was talking about, I understand the visceral reaction I get from women today who hit me on social media who assume because of my past that I cheated on Cynthia because once again, once you're a cheater, you're always a cheater. Mm -hmm. Once a convict, right. you're always a convict. Mm -hmm. Once an arsonist, you're always an arsonist. I get that, you, that label is stuck on you. It's just up to me to make sure that I am not living up to that label, right? And I'm not living as that label. So when people come at me hard, I just give them grace and say, okay, I find that's your opinion. You don't know me personally. You don't know exactly what happened. It wasn't cheating or whatever, but I can understand your reaction because there is trauma that happens in women's lives, just like men, that when it comes to cheating, a lot of times their dads cheated, mm. their uncles cheated, their cousins, somebody, a man in their life cheated that affected them internally, uh, internally, internally uh, and emotionally and may have even affected their family lifestyle where their dad cheated and it ended the relationship with their mom and all they saw the hurt in their mom's eyes or whatever. Yeah. So now that's trauma that they have to deal with and they can't stand somebody who cheats. And that's why they say, I can't stand a cheater because they're thinking about what happened in their past mm. and how it affected them. And I understand that. So that's why I give it grace and I understand that. But well, I'm trying to remember the question now because I, I kind of go off the tangent. So, uh, my man, you made me forget the question. <laughs> <laughs> so what I was saying is, um, sometimes I think that women are afforded women. this level of grace yeah. when it comes to you yeah. know it's just it's a mistake. But but yeah, but see, so for, so women because of yeah, and and, and like I said in a second, I, I wasn't getting certain things at home that I that I needed, mm. and I was saying it. So like we we get to a point sometimes, and I felt like, and I always tell my boys, I felt like the woman in the relationship in my second marriage. I felt like a woman feels, you're not loving me. You're not showing me how much you love. You're not telling me I'm beautiful. You're not bringing, you're not doing this. You're not cooking for me. You're not doing certain things that I desire, that I needed, that I wanted from my wife at home. It's and it wasn't place. being given. And yeah, it's a terrible place. And the, some, and that, this is not to, to dog this woman out. I, I got Obviously, she's the mother of my child and one of my children. And I got mad respect for her, whatever. I mean, she may, may not have been capable of giving it to me. I wasn't cheating on her. It was. It was just like there was. She was a great mom, but she wasn't giving me the things that I needed to maintain the emotions that I needed to to maintain. You know, gaining weight, the support I felt could have been there a little bit better once again, but I wasn't getting that at home. So after nine years of marriage <laughs> and the last three or four years not getting anything, sex, mm -hmm. anything, not being touched or anything like that. Yeah, you start desiring something outside. And then when somebody comes along and they start pouring into you what you've been missing, then you want, man, this is, I'm getting water from over here and I'm dry over there. I'm going to die over here emotionally. Over here emotionally, you're pouring into me. So it became an emotional thing. So to answer your question, I do believe a lot of times women will have this, I guess, excuse, which once again, there's never an excuse for right, it. Right, right. But women can understand if they feel like, the man wasn't pouring into them in some kind of way, whether it's financially, he's sitting around, he ain't taking care of the bills, he ain't taking care of his family, he's dogging her out, he's cheating himself or whatever, so there's grace. And then plus the past of what we have done as men in the past. And I'm not saying that we're all like that or whatever, but the traumas that they suffered 
women can like, girl, go ahead. Women are proud. They can do it. We can do the same thing too and all that type of stuff. But once again, there is no excuse for any gender to ever go out and cheat on their spouse. And that means emotional cheating and obviously physical cheating too. But mm -hmm. they do have a little bit more grace when it comes to that, among other women. Among other women. Correct. Among other women. But I will say this. Here's the, here's the difference. A woman can be cheated on several times within a year. A woman could date you, right, Tashawn, and you, Ryan, six months later after, because she's, oh, she's crying, oh, man, you cheated, I can't believe you did this, whatever, blah, blah. And then you come along with your light-skinned ass, and you like, okay, <laughs> blah, blah. You, know, you know, do all this type of stuff like that, six, pour into her, and then she's with you, and she'll fall in love with you, right? After he cheated on her six or seven months ago, come right back and deal with it, because they're stronger than us when it comes to the emotions of cheating. So he'll get back into a relationship, and you can cheat on her, and then a year later, She'll get back with somebody else. Maybe somebody that looks totally different. Maybe she'll go to a white dude or whatever because she'll try something or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> for a man, for a man, we get cheated on. He a villain. Huh? Mm. Oh, I'm, man, mm. I'm, 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 no. Yeah, you yeah. Were and, and, and I wrote about scarred. this. And I'll tell you, scarred. <clears throat> yeah. You are scarred. And guess what scarred is, man? Scarred is one letter away from being scared. Scarred is one letter away from being scared. So when a man is scarred, Take one of those R's out because then we become scared. Mm. We do. And we don't have, sometimes we have, we don't have the mental, we have the mental capacity, but we're afraid to show that mental capacity that we are scared, that we've been scarred, that we've been hurt. I'm like, fuck that bitch. You know, that's yeah. where we go. Not down calling the woman. You might say F, right. F them all. Yeah, fuck yeah. man. Like, all right. I'm, yeah. I'm, yeah. I ain't, man, I ain't, I ain't, I'm never going to do this with a man. I'm, I'm man, I'm, I'm, and I'm going to tell you the truth. And once again, People, no excuse. I always use this as a preface. I take full accountability, and there's no excuse. But sometimes this is the mentality that we have as men: mm -hmm. is that when I was the first woman I ever told that I love, 15 years old, man, mm -hmm. I was dating a senior. I was a sophomore. She was bad. Too. That's big. Yeah, <laughs> she was big. bad. It was in the foot. Was at a football game. It was outside in the car, man. I had. She was one of the baddest girls in school, bro. I was this knowing I was the shit, right? I'm in the passenger seat. She's over in the, in the, in the uh, driver's seat in her, her brother's car, man. We in there. We drinking wine coolers back in the day. Getting fucked up. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got fucked up. Mm. We see kissing, we hugging and shit, man. You know, blah, blah. I think I'm about to smash and everything like that. So, But then I love this girl. Bruh, you got to understand, I, I love this girl. I like, I was into her. 15, man. And this is the first time I had this feeling like everything that I, is inside of me, I want to pour into you. Yeah. I want to love you forever. It's like a pool. On yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. Pool. you are my queen, man. And I don't know what a queen is at 15, but I don't know I don't know <laughs> at 15. Right. right. And I look at this girl, man, Luther Vandross is playing, or so I thought, I'm just, that's my story. I know something was on the radio. <laughs> right. Something smooth, something smooth. Something smooth's on the radio. And I'm like, man, it's a perfect time. I got to tell this girl how I feel. I got to tell So, man, with all sincerity and all genuine, um, uh, ambition or emotions in my heart and my soul, man. I poured out and I looked this girl in the eyes and I said, I love you. I said, I, when I say it today, I still feel how I felt when I said that because I was love. I, so I, was in, I was in love with this girl. And that's the first love, too. That's, that's the yeah. first strong time. love. Deep. Strong love. And once again, we having this great time, wine coolers, kissing, all that stuff like that. When I told her this, she looked at me like, she did like that mm. man and even at that time i didn't know that was shattering me mm. a villain was but made that said, day she said yes she said let's go we got out the car we went back in the stadium she said she was leaving with her brother that was on a friday this is before cell phones and all that stuff you got to understand that I'm trying to call over the weekend. The phone is busy. This is before we had we had call hold or call waiting. Yeah, yeah. But this is before we had house phones, right? Wow. Phone's busy. Can't get in touch with her. Monday we get back to school. I remember a girl named Karen West. Never forget. Came up to me. She's like, "Are you and I'm not gonna say the girl's name. You and so and so still together?" I'm like, "Yeah, you know, still my girl. I'm still thinking they just hey, just maybe." Just. She said. Huh. She looked at me like. You know how somebody look at you like, oh, I know said, something. She set you, you up for that. Yeah, yeah she, she set you up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she looked at me like that. And I didn't know what she was talking about. 30 minutes later, man, I walk down the hall. The bell's ringing. We walking down the hall. And everybody's looking at me. And I'm wondering why everybody's looking at me. Because here comes a girl walking down the hall with another dude holding oh. hands. 
I didn't even know we had broken up, bro. Mm. I didn't know she had broken up with me. And that humiliation, mm. that feeling and seeing that face, me pouring out and giving, I, it destroyed me for the longest time. And I didn't even realize how long it destroyed For over 30 years, bro. And like people mm. say, that's an excuse or whatever. No, man, that, that affected me. Mm. Right. And I, I didn't realize that until I started going to therapy and realized what affected me for so long and why I could not fall in love with somebody, why I could not trust, and why I always felt like I needed a backup plan. Mm. I always felt like I needed a backup plan after that. And then also other factors of other guys being involved and doing all that type of stuff like that. But to, that's my point. A man can get hurt one time. I got hurt as a little boy, and it affected me for the next 30 years, including two of my marriages. That's I what I'm saying. That. That's how that works. And see, you brought up, man, first of all, the bar of the day is the remove one word and scar turns to scared. Yes, yeah, scar. Because yeah. a lot of the men, I would say this, even though we in this culture, the women still really, they still aspire to be married. Mm -hmm. Like for the most part, women still aspire to be married. As a collective. As a collective. But when you hear men talk, it's a lot of fear in that of making that jump yeah. and getting involved with a marriage. And sometimes the fear is that she's going to change. Mm. The fear is that she's going to leave. Mm -hmm. She has leverage in the court system after she's gone. Mm. It's all of this fear. Yeah. What do you say? Because in that second marriage, you made a really good point. You said that you were not getting fed what you needed. Right. And you were getting neglected. Mm -hmm. And almost things kind of flip flop. Flip. I felt like I was the woman. You felt like uh, you was the woman the, the, in the relationship. Most women feel that way when it yeah. comes. Yep, yep. And I hear a lot of men say that me... Even me and Clark, I can't lie. That's a concern of mine that I, I see something in a woman and then I get down the line and she almost kind of pulls the rug under you. Mm. Like things just is not what you thought it was initially. So I'm listen, being that I know you got some time and tenure in the game, <laughs> what is something? Give my men some things that they can do to avoid if they have that fear or concern. We're talking to the men now. Right. If they got some fear, concern that this is not going to be what they think it is, what should they be doing? How should they be vetting? What should they be asking to figure out whether or not this is who they think it is and make sure that that's going to stay, you know, uh, through, through, through the First of all, it's a self-evaluation thing. First of all, you got to come correct. If you're looking for a queen, you got to be a king. You got to make sure you're a king. You got to make sure you're whole, right? So you got to make sure you got everything together. Like, And when you're looking for a person, you should want them. You should need them. I always say that. And it's a difference. I should anytime a woman tell me I need a boyfriend, or I need a man, I'm like, you don't need a man, you need to work on yourself. Mm. I say the same thing with my, my fellas. Man, I need a girl. No, you don't need. Mm. Now you will want to have somebody to share something with. I right. get that. You will want to have a companion. But if you are whole and you're happy within, you don't need anything except water and air. To be honest with you, you ain't even got to stay black these days. Remember when back in the day, they said all I need to do is stay black and die? Right. All you got to yeah. do is die one day. You ain't even got to stay black. You can be his color tomorrow. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's what I'm saying, bro. So when it comes to relationships, whenever I date and I tell my, my, my homies and my girls, my, my home girls the same thing, when you go on a date, ask this question with somebody. First of all, who are you? Are you sending your representative? Because I want the real you. And ask these questions. And I always have this one test that I give them that's going to determine what they need to work on or even if they're aware they need to work on something in their life. The last three relationships you've been in, if, you, if I were to take the last three, uh, if I'm a man, if you were to take the last three men that you're in a relationship with, if I'm talking to this woman, what would they have in common that they would say that you need to work on? Get your notepads, fellas. What do you, what, what would all three, if I say, man, think about four things Sally needs to work on, and they come up with a list of four things, what's the one thing that they would all have in common on that list? Does it work the same for women, you think? Oh, yeah, it definitely works the same for women. Because, okay. yeah, that's, that's definitely, it, it's the same way for both Yeah, both, it's a great, it's a great question. Yeah, what are, because gonna be now you see how you are in relationships and how you deal with relationships. Yeah. It's, it's the same thing as having a resume. If, I, if mm. I go back and I'm looking at somebody, somebody sitting across the table from me and I'm a boss and I want to hire this person for a job because that's what you're doing in a relationship, right? Exactly. You're vetting. You're Because you, you, they come in buttoned up, 
straight, you know, I'm going to be on time all the time and just hand you this resume. Hey, I've been here, 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 here. Yeah, you can tell me you've been with Ryan and you can be with Tyshawn, you can be with Lana, you can be with all these different people, whatever, whatnot. But okay, yeah, these are good dudes. You had them. Okay, blah, blah, blah. That's, that's impressive. But what are they saying about you? The difference is in jobs, in, in, in the, the professional world, they really can't say negative stuff about you. Mm. They really can't. It's against the law for them to say negative stuff about you unless you, you know, it was something that was public, right? When it comes to these relationships, if you really want to know who you're really dealing with and if they really want to know who they need to work on, they know that they've had the last three relationships. There has been something that all three of them men said they, you know, this is your problem. And whatever that is, it could be the mouth, it could be they're not aggressive, they're not sexually, they're not giving enough sex or whatever, whatnot, or they're late, they care too much about their friends more so than they care about the relationship or whatever. That's a self-evaluation for them as well. Because a lot of times they ain't even thinking like that. They think they come in, well, oh, he cheated, he did something wrong, but okay, what, what, what did you do wrong? Because I don't care about what he did at the end of the day. I do, in a sense, because it might have caused a reaction or whatnot. Mm. But are you, once again, it goes back to my first point. Are you over that? Have you healed from what he did? Because if you're mad about it, now you're bringing baggage to me, right? But if there's something like, especially when it comes like some, some the mouth. Oh, they will say my mouth. Uh, I'm too, you know, blah, blah, blah. I'm, I'm lethal that's with the this. That's the one stuff. I can't deal with right the, there. So that's the, the a mouth. lot of men. A lot of men say that's an issue. And then this next question you should ask, like, so how are you dealing with it? How are you? Do you feel like you need to work on it? And how are you working on it? So then you decide if you want to go with it. Mm, that's when I ask for the check. The then check you know. Then you, <laughs> but, but, you know, some, but, some, but once again, I, it could have been a situation. Like I said, I didn't cheat on everybody. But somebody was like, man, you know, I, I was, uh, I flirt. I'm a, I, I like being around ladies. And they will say, you know, some women can't handle Some women can. Like, I, I, most of the majority of my friends are females. I got a lot of slack on, uh, on uh, smack on or housewives because I introduced Cynthia to my female friends, all platonic. Mm. But the majority, and I invited a lot of my, my guy friends, but they didn't want to be on camera on housewives. This is what they don't tell you. So, right. <laughs> this, is what they, this is what they don't tell you. They're like, so Mike, Mike, I, the player. I, had a, I had a house party at my house, and Cynthia, the first time she's coming to LA, she's going to meet my friends. And I'm like, hey, we're going to do a scene where you're going to meet Cynthia, and you had heard about Cynthia. Some of you met her already or whatever. So, we're going to do a scene in my house, going to have a little house party. And when I have a house party, usually it's even. I do know more women than men, but I invited all the men too and usually the men show up because the women are there right? right and these women are platonic i'm not messing with them but then i say this for housewives oh no dog i can't do that <laughs> they don't they want to be on camera so guess what happens it was me another dude maybe two dudes and like 14 women mm. so it looked like proportionally <laughs> Play like, ass Mike. Yeah. right right back I, at I, it again I, I look, and, and me do, 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 nobody's gonna think that. i'm not thinking because i'm not saying i knew it was innocent so I'm not saying this looks bad for me until it comes out. Oh, he, oh, red flag, red flag. <laughs> oh, my God, look at the red flag. All them female friends, he got enough of them. It's trouble. Oh, he admitted he ain't love his ex-wife. He wasn't in love with his ex-wife. He cheated. Ooh, girl, Cynthia, run. All that. I'm like, man, hold up, slow down. You seeing a three-minute clip of a two-hour conversation that we had where guys were coming in and out, mm -hmm. but the guys would not sign a release form and did not want to be on camera. They yeah. didn't want to be a part of that scene. But people take the perception, and it's not always reality. I'm not here to defend that, but yeah, it's, it's just, it's, 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 it's different. <laughs> it's different. So to answer your question, man, ask the person what they need to work on and hope that they're true about that. And then over a period of time, you take your time. You don't jump into a relationship because the girl's fine because you got a good job because she checks all the boxes mm -hmm. or whatever. She's a I, IG model and everything like that. Man, a relationship, man, just like... In a job, there should be a, an evaluation period for both sides. Is this man worthy or this woman worthy of being in my life? Because I know what it takes to sit at my table. Mike, check this out. I, we had a show last night, man. It was so good. Actually, it would have been kind of dope if Mike was in that conversation. We actually, oh, he would have turned up. We, <laughs> did, uh, <laughs> we uh, did a show giving kind of some game to the ladies who are busy professionals. Mm. You know, so like uh, we had two... Um, experts on a platform and they all got experience coaching 
and mentoring women who are typically busy professionals, ambitious women, and trying to help them find love in their relationships. One considers herself an <clears throat> alpha female. Yes. And the other one considers herself a boss bride. So and that I, can kind of give you some context. Okay. And that's the and, and those are both like they they wrote books on this stuff. They got, you know, information. And me and Ryan, it, it was a really great conversation. But one thing in particular I wanted to know because I mean you date married, like a legendary housewife. Mm-hmm. So I imagine this is a woman who's a boss. She's busy, she got things going for herself. Mm-hmm. And would you say, especially as a man who's been exposed to just a, a bunch of you know, women over the span of your life. Would you say it's more likely that a woman who is busy, who is ambitious, who has a lot going on, is it more likely for her to cater less to your uh, less mm. to your needs than mm. a woman who is probably more, uh, I would say, is less career oriented, less career oriented, and probably more focused on, on on just the home in general. Or as the women in my DM say, would you date a regular woman? Like. <laughs> 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 is that what they say for yeah, real? Say, would you would you date a regular one? Like, uh, yeah. Because you, you kind of it seems like the, you like the glam a little I'm bit like, though. Yeah, like aliens, are like, they're regular women. They're like to me, they're regular women. Like, but I understand what they're saying. Like the celebrities, the bosses, or whatever. Right. Yeah. Right. And you know what's crazy is like I, I before Cynthia, I dated a woman who was a judge. Uh, she, was a, she was at a TV show. I dated an actress, a list actress. I, I all that type. Not bragging, but it's all been under. Yeah. This is the first time that it was actually in the open. You know what I mean? Yeah. And this was kind of public or whatever. But yeah, I, I think it's, I think they just don't have the time to do a lot of that type of stuff. And I don't blame them because they still have their career. But why do you like work. that then? So like, why is that typically the type of woman you go for? Uh, Because I don't have the time. <laughs> <laughs> that was real. That was <laughs> real. <laughs> uh, be, because I, I think sometimes when you're, when, when you have that in common, right? So that's what's crazy when people say, would you date somebody regular? I'm like, yeah, if you understand my life. Hmm. If you understand, you have to understand the person you're with, right? So when you're dealing with a boss, a woman who called, and I love that. I love ambition. Oh, my gosh. I can, ooh. That, <laughs> I don't you know, get excited on the table, bro. <laughs> I love an ambitious woman. Wow. I don't if you work you could if you work at Walmart but you ambitious and say I want to own Walmart man that turns me on mm. I I love no, I love it aesthetically please don't get me wrong mm-hmm. but you can be a seven and automatically you go to a nine to me mm. like that and it's not because I want anything that you have and that's another thing like if people see boss women and sometimes they could be dating somebody who may not be as popular and they think that a lot of other women think, well, he's trying to get something from her mm-hmm. or whatever, which was kind of the case with me and Cynthia. I'm like, I built a career for 20 some years on network television. I like a lot of people know who I am. I got my own money. I never needed anything from her. But a lot of men are turned off by that only because of the perception of what some people may think of, oh, uh, his girl, her girlfriend's like, he ain't good enough for you and all that type of stuff like that. But you can't worry about that. So it has to be um, a man who is sure of himself. So my thing is because I'm busy and I got a lot to do, she will understand that I can't spend all the time with her and I can't cater a lot to her. But when we do have time to spend together, I expect us to have that quality time and vice versa. So when she is busy, like when Cynthia was busy all the time, man, I love that. Promote, hey, what can I do to help you out? Mm-hmm. What can we do to help each other? Because I look at ambition as somebody like, okay, I have this. With her, we can have this. And she has this. But with me, we can have that. You know what I mean? I'm like talking about what we can like. What's, what's that, that song? Uh, I'm a movement by myself, but we're a, I'm a, I'm a, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. a movement by myself, but uh, I'm a force we're a force together. together. I, that's one of my favorite lyrics. Mm. We, we a force. I'm a movement by myself. I'm confident enough that I, I'm, I'm a boss. I know that. I'm a king, right? I want a boss woman and a queen. And if you're somebody, I guess the regular woman, I want somebody that's still going to enhance me in some kind of way. There's still got to be work. You can't sit around and go to uh, uh, to Neiman every day, right? You know, on on my dime or whatnot. You can't sit around and just you know come to the table with nothing, right? Because right. if I provide the the tablecloth, the silverware, <laughs> uh, everything that's on the table, the food, or whatever, and all you come to the table with is your appetite, that's not enough for me. 
And I'm not saying anything wrong with women that get away with that and the men that allows that to happen or whatever. No, it but, is wrong. Yeah. But, <laughs> yeah. But, but, but I, need, I need somebody that is going to be, you know, that's going to enhance. And like, at least bring the dessert. At least do something yeah. like that. But if, you're, if, you come, but if you come to the table with all that, best believe I'm adding. So we got a five-course dish. We're going to have a nine-course dish. Oh, we're going to have a chef making this. Instead of you cooking it, we're going to have a chef making that. So I'm going to add something to that. So I, I don't think some women in that capacity, not necessarily they don't have the capacity of doing it, they just don't have the time to do it because there's only so much time in their schedule. So you're acknowledging that it's just that relationship does come with some inherent neglect. It, I, I, don't, I wouldn't call it neglect. I just think you have to, you have to understand. I think there is, um, what would I say? I just think that it's, um, it's a situation that a person has to adjust to. It is a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle, bro. And it's not like, and, and I think that if, and, and then the woman or the man has to also ask themselves, how much do they want? Because there are things that if you're a boss and you got this and you're CEO of a company, or if I'm working all the time, yeah, I think there is time when you do have a relationship, you have to find time for that person. As I'm speaking as a man now, as, as a man in a relationship with a woman that you know is looking for my time or whatever. So if I'm making millions of dollars a year, I can still make millions of dollars. Yeah, I may make a hundred thousand dollars less for mm. not taking this one job, but I'm taking my wife or my girlfriend on this vacation that she's been always wanting to go on. I can spend that time with her. I can go on, you know, uh, get get massages together. I can spend quality time with her. I think that's important because, you know, when you do enter into a, into a relationship, it's an agreement that you have, and you have to have that understanding that right. But that is that is important for you as a man when you're dealing with that. See, that's a, that's a good point that you made that because at the end of the day, neglect is relative. Yeah. It's completely relative because if I want more time or require more time or if she does, then in that situation, it's unhealthy for me. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if that's enough time for you, actually more time is actually bad for you, bad right. for your business, will make you frustrated, resentful, and everything else, right. then that's actually a detriment to you, so I think that's also a big part of figuring out what's right for you. And, and, and here's here's the thing. So when I when I say that, because I go, once go go back to my second marriage or whatever, there's a certain type of difference. You know what I mean? There has to be something. Mm. Like it can't be a business arrangement. I don't want a business relation r r arrangement. Well, I want to grow business wise, but I also want our personal relationship to be able to grow too. You know what I mean? So there's that that capital that we have to uh, continue to increase in that relationship. So. Yeah, I, I, I just think that there has to be an understanding when you're dealing with a woman who is strong. Oh, and, and once again, shout out to the ladies that's out there doing their thing because I'm not one of those guys that says, you know, hey, you're, you're too strong, you're too mannish or whatever and all that type of stuff like that. I get it. There are some women that just, if a woman says, I don't need a man, I understand what they're, what they're saying. We can't take it too personal because it's exactly what I'm saying. I don't need a woman. I want a woman. Now, if a woman says, I don't need a man, and a man can't do nothing for me, blah, 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 blah. Now, okay, well, then why don't get in a relationship? Right, right. Don't, don't be in something like you already basically poo-pooing already that you've already destroyed before you even start because you don't know what a man can do for you because you haven't met the right man. So let me let me ask you this. So when you, you know, in a relationship with a career woman, a successful career woman, mm. uh, a part of her success is you know making sure she's developing and maintaining relationships with people in her industry mm. a lot of times that, that might include other successful men right so how do you deal with that oh I'm, I'm secure i'm super secure i am like cynthia for example past relationships i've had that were under the radar or whatever i i am a person once again i told you i got a lot of female friends right mm. it's totally platonic whatever i deal with a lot of females who are bosses in this industry mm. who are bosses who can get me jobs and do things for me who have been my bosses or whatever but the thing is what i do is like if they're your friend they're our friend now got it that's it that's my, my whole thing like i don't care if you got you, you look cynthia y'all gotta understand and this is not a secret so i'm not putting her on blast whatever cynthia dated some really successful men mm -hmm. i got compared to like leon this legendary actor right right, you know, right. leon good looking dude how many times out here i'm like oh she should have stayed with Leon. They look better together. You know, he don't look like Leon. <laughs> all that type of stuff. But you know what? Here's my security. It's like, okay, well, Leon's a good-looking dude, but I am also gorgeous. Mm. You know what I mean? That's Got how you. I feel. Got you. <laughs> I, I feel like I'm gorgeous. I feel like, I, yes, I, I got it going. Somebody likes me. Mm. My mom at least liked me. You know what I mean? Right. So I'm good with that. I may not be 
on that aesthetic level that he is. Or, you know, he, she also dated Boris Kojo back in the day and all that type of stuff. So she's had, and she's still friends with them to this day. Leon has come and stayed at the house. Whoa. Yeah. Wow. The ex, ex-boyfriend the stayed ex, at the house. The ex, yeah, her baby daddy. Her baby daddy, yeah. Stayed oh. at the house. Yes. Oh, okay, baby. Okay. Yeah, and I was like, on, on the temptations. Nah, yeah, no, I, I know exactly what you're talking yeah. about, but that's kind of crazy. You know, I never thought about that because baby dad, technically, he's a member of the family. Yeah, he right? is, like he, truly. So if the baby, I wish, man, I wish he was alive because I want to poll. I want to know, will you let, put in the comments, yeah. how you feel, fellas, let my, my fellas know about the baby daddy staying at the house. Was that a conversation that even needed to be had with you? I mean. Or was it, was it something I, you had to I, think I, about? I, I, yeah, I mean, but I think it's a matter of respect to let me know, you know, how do you feel about this, right? Uh, but that was something that was happening beforehand and whatnot. And I'm like, okay, cool. So, cause back in the day, you know, I would, there would've been times when I would go to Maryland to visit my oldest and I would stay at her mom's house, mm. you know what I mean? For, and I was in a relationship. And I'm like, there's nothing going on, absolutely. But that's the matter of security, who I am, right? I know it doesn't work for a lot of people. People will shut, they will just <laughs> shut it down. Right. And I know if, you, if we were live, the fellas like, oh, he a fool. Oh, they was doing <laughs> yeah. all that. Like, like, Women would be like, oh, he's crazy. In. Oh, that's because he's doing his own thing yeah. and all that type of stuff. Yeah. But, you know, they be going, I, I get it. I know it's unconventional. But what works for me may not work for everybody else. I'm just saying, like, you know, she had, to answer your question, she had a lot of, platonic relationship or relationships with men. Oh, as a matter of fact, here's the thing. I'll ask you a question like this, Ryan. Every straight man that was still her friend in her life that she had relationships with, she had a relationship with. Got and it. I'm like, I'm cool. Like, cause if you mess up, that's on you. That's on you. And, and but yeah, it it if you see certain things, you, you're gonna be you're not gonna be disrespected. I'm never gonna allow somebody to disrespect me. And I would not disrespect her. And I always tell people like this. I said, I don't care if you have, when I get into a relationship with somebody, when I talk to my ladies, I'm like, yo, my lady. <laughs> don't get the wrong <laughs> right, thing. Right, right. I talk know. to my lady. I know everybody <laughs> take that the wrong way. Right. If, if, when I'm in a relationship with somebody, I always say, I don't care about your past as long as your past isn't in my presence and present. Mm. And I don't know about it. You understand what I'm saying? That was about so, exactly what you're saying. Yeah. I don't care about your past as long as your past isn't in my presence and presence and I don't know about it. So if I dated somebody that Tyshawn dated, right? And uh, Tyshawn a long time ago, whatever, and she, he may come by and say hello or whatever. Okay, you ain't got to tell me, hey, you know, you know he used to hit it. You right, know what right. I'm <laughs> he used to knock this down or whatever and whatnot. He got this certain thing. I don't need all the details or whatever. But if we're doing business together, <laughs> mm-hmm. if you knew I was coming here to do an interview with this guy, man, just tell me. Like, hey, well, just let you know, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. And sometimes you ain't got to tell me. Like, oh, you doing Tasha? Oh, yeah, I know him. And I'm like, oh. I said, then I ask him, like, so did y'all? Yeah, yeah, but that was a long time. Okay, cool. I mean, cool. My dude, blah, blah, blah. I don't understand you know a world. Right. I've interviewed her exes, Jason Williams. I interviewed, had him on my show. And Jason Williams is still madly in love with Cynthia. Oh, wow. Madly Goodness. Wow. And he told me. But I'm like, okay, I'm, but see, the thing is, Damn. and people say this, <laughs> I, I, it, it sounds crazy. <laughs> it sounds crazy. And, and people, I remember when I did the interview, people were like, wow, that's, that's great. And, and I remember my co-host like, man, I, I got mad respect for you, bro, because I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I'm like, bro, I, I, I understand why. You don't just fall out of love with somebody. I'm, I'm happy that the brother was honest. Mm. It ain't like he's being disrespectful and trying to take her away. It ain't like he's calling her behind my back or anything like that. Now, if I find out that, then that's the end of the relationship. Right. You know what I mean? But at the same time, I just want to know, man. Just give me a heads up. And that goes back to the trauma of, once again, first woman I told I love. I didn't know, man. I didn't know. I saw her re- reaction, but I didn't know we had broken up until two days later. She's walking up, and everybody's looking at me, so everybody else knew except me. Yeah. And so that's my trauma. So that's why, I'm, that's why I want to know, like, if he's in my presence, we're around, man, because I'm going to pick up on it. There have been times, and this is, there was one time that Cynthia didn't tell me. And there's this guy, prominent, once again, another prominent guy, and I knew him. I've been knowing this guy for years. I knew Leon for years or whatever. You know, we all in the same industry or something. Mm-hmm. You're going to run and see these guys or whatever. No problem with that. You know, just like 
in the entertainment industry, I mean, Lori Harvey probably got right. boyfriends that know each other. I mean, and this is the thing. Oh, yeah, if, if you dating a woman and she's dating you, you're a successful man. Yeah. There's no reason to think that she, before you, she didn't date other successful yeah, you're the first And then one. you're going right, to be right, around right. those other successful men, exactly. especially in the same industry. It ain't so many of you. It right. happens or whatever. But once again, there's no disrespect or whatever. We can still get along and all that type of stuff like that. But there was this one time she didn't tell me. And I went to lunch with this guy in Chicago. And like I said, I've been knowing her for a while. We're sitting down. And like 10 minutes into the conversation, we're talking about Cynthia. I'm like, he hit it. <laughs> <laughs> He is. Just off you seeing the uh, body language? I knew. Oh, bro, we wow. know. I know, too. I know. You, wow. good, man, the spotty sense went oh, on. Oh, yeah. 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 No, fast. I ain't tripped because still, I just actually saw him a couple of days ago. You know, I, I wow. And I said, uh, so I called him like, uh, I said, yo, I said, uh, you and blah, 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 yo. And she, oh. I'm like, I said, look, once again, babe, I don't care about your past unless your past is in my presence. And the only thing I care about that is because, and it wasn't going to be the case with this guy because I knew him well and we was cool. Right. But what if the guy isn't cool? What if the guy like doesn't like me, low key hating or whatever mm -hmm. or whatnot? And this guy, or we get into an argument, and then he does some Tupac. That's why I fucked your bitch. You know what I'm <laughs> yeah. saying? Because dudes, do, you know that what saying? They they do that too. They do that too. And and it catches you off guard. Yeah. And when it catches you off guard, then of course you feel even more disrespected. Then you're gonna start fighting. You know what I mean? You're gonna mm -hmm. do that, and then it's gonna lead to. It's a lot of trouble. But if I already Drama. know that, I'm like, bro, okay, who don't know that? You say something like that, man, okay, well, you still just, I'm still going to punch you. But at the same <laughs> time, like, okay, I ain't going to get mad at her because I wasn't caught off guard. That's it. I ain't going to lie, Mike. Let me tell you something. <laughs> I don't even like when I bring, I remember one time, oh, man, this was a bad situation. I had, I had, a, I had a young lady that I, I was dating very seriously right after school. Mm -hmm. And my best friend at the time, my best friend at the time, man, he was going viral. This was when Vine was popping back in the day. Okay, yeah, yeah. He was like one of them like sex symbols <laughs> that was going like one of them frat boys that was going viral all over online because of his neck rolling and all this shit that he was doing online. It was going kind of crazy. So I remember I graduated um, and the young lady I was dating, I actually said, yeah, I'm going out to a party tonight, man. You know, I'm, I'm I was celebrating the graduation. A couple of guys, all my guys from high school was meeting up. I knew from high school. Mm -hmm. She was like, oh, okay, cool, 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 cool. And it just so happens that she asked who I was going out with. Mm -hmm. So I showed her who I was going out with. She was like, that's your best friend? No. Oh, oh. And in my mind, like uh, the way she, you, you know the Spidey says uh, She was uh, like, that's your best that's friend? That's your best friend? Oh. And in my mind, mm -hmm. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> and I, like I know it. what kind of dude he was too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in my mind, I'm like, please don't tell me my best boy, my closest boy, please don't tell me he smashed my <laughs> This is my girl, please don't tell me that. Uh, uh, uh. And I'm like, in my mind, I just, I just said, how you know him? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even have no air in my chest when I asked. It was just all, how you know You got bubble him? guts. Right. 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 <laughs> she was like, oh, no, I just see him all over the internet. But thank God it wasn't no situation. But okay. I know I know that feeling of you knowing that your woman potentially is in the mix. And I think that's a, another reason I kind of like my woman to kind of be just kind of low-key. Just because me personally, I, man, my Don't mean you, she ain't got a pass, though, bro. No, no, no. That's I know. True. I know. I yeah. know she don't got a pass. Yeah. I mean, I know she, she all women yeah. have passed, uh -huh. but it just means it's probably a little less likely that I'm going to be running into the past. Well, this maybe that's the reason why she quiet now. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good point. That's a good point. <laughs> hey, yo, if you, if you, if you, let, let me tell you something, brother. Let me, we're talking about red flags for men, yeah. okay? If all of a sudden your girl tells you when she was in her 20s and her 30s, I don't know how old you guys are, but I'm in my 50s, so... I date women in their forties or fifty. If they told you in the twenties, thirties, they was and then all of a sudden they hit a spell where they just stopped going out for ten years and they and they still don't go out to this day. A little bit of a red flag. All of a sudden they just stopped. Mm. Now it's one thing to have kids and all that type of stuff like that, or they've been married or whatever and stuff like that. But if all of a sudden they just stop and they drop off, and they ain't even got social media and stuff like that. Yeah, a bit of a red flag. Like, okay, well, what did you do what in happened? your past that you got to go into hiding? <laughs> yeah, and because and you don't want to go out now because a lot of sometimes they don't want to go out because they don't want to run into somebody mm. that would know them from those days. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it doesn't mean that they didn't have their, what they call their whole phase or whatever. Right. We all, and, and it's okay to have it. It's fine. But once again, just because they quiet now don't mean that they weren't buck ass wild in, in, the, in the past. So, so let me ask you, Mike, because a lot of our followers too, they in that same age range that mm. you are. We got, a, we got a pretty mature following. So for a lady that's in her 50s, mm. right? 
Damn. What the first of all, would you would you date a woman that's in your age, or you typically like to date a little bit younger than you? Just oh, in Cynthia general? was two years older than me. Cynthia was two years older. Okay, wow. she, she, yeah, Cynthia. Yeah, no, Cynthia's three years older than me. Wow, three Cynthia. and a half years older. Than wow. Me. Yeah. So because of that, I want to know, like, just to kind of put the ladies on game, because a lot of them actually want to find love mm-hmm. the same way. They want to be married like y'all were, right, at, at that age for sure. One hundred percent. So what should a woman do? Um, especially at that point in their life, at that age, mm. to be able to position themselves and probably wow. even attract a brother like yourself? That's a good question. Well, for somebody like, well, just be themselves, man. I mean, I think at this age, I think the the problem sometimes for brothers, and I'm just not speaking for me, but I'm speaking for like the guys that I know that are my age and what I hear. So I'm just keeping it real, right? They have either been married before, mm-hmm and they have no intentions of getting married, and or they've had kids, and they definitely don't want to have, like if you're in the 50s, women don't, probably don't want to have kids anymore, but some women want to get married again. Or they want to, and this, this is great, that's wonderful, whatever. The problem that they have is that when you get to a certain age as men, <laughs> it's, it's funny how it's reversed. Men my age seem to sometimes, if you're successful, or you look a certain way, or if you're both, you attract much younger women. Mm. Of course, of course. Because you're established, you're zaddy. You're a finished product. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right, right. You're zaddy. You know, you're, like, yeah. you're established. You can yeah. take care of like they're in their 30s or whatever and stuff yep. like that. He's, and you, you it, it, I, I thought I was going through some kind of midlife crisis before Cynthia, because I was like my late 40s, successful, doing all that type of stuff. And every, and it wasn't that I was looking for this. Every woman I attracted was like between the ages of 26 and 32. Wow. Like I was, and I felt like I could not date them. Mm. I can't have a serious, like you're close in age to my daughter. And that's my whole thing is like, you gotta be close in age to me than you are my oldest daughter who just turned 24. So the advice I give them is like, first of all, just be yourself, take care of yourself. Don't think because you're a certain age that you got to look a certain age. And there's nothing wrong with looking your age, don't get me wrong. But don't feel like I'm oh I got I ain't gotta work out. Man, go to the gym. Go to the gym every now and then. Put yourself in a position to be, I don't know what the right word is. Sought after. Sought after or a hot commodity. But mm-hmm. there are other things that you bring to the table that these little young girls don't. You mm-hmm. got experience, you've been through life, you probably already have a kid. You know what I mean? You got yourself together, you're mature, you can help this person grow. These are some of the things that you need to lead with too. And if you look a certain way, man, like I said, just continue to enhance yourself. <laughs> Don't think because you're not 20 or 30 years old that you ain't got a, you know, that you can't be sexy. Yeah. I think women in their 50s and their 60s are sex, man. Angela Bassett is sexy. Gorgeous. Yeah. Oh my God. Holly Selma Berry, Hayek. Selma Hayek. Uh, Holly Berry. Oh, I know they're glamorous. And guess what? It ain't because of all the makeup and all that because they can take that off and still be beautiful, man. Cynthia Bailey is beautiful. Yeah, she She's is. a gorgeous woman. I, you know, I, I can never take anything away from her. But you know what? And I also think that once you, I will say once you in a relationship, maintain it. Mm. Maintain what caught them. Same thing for guys. If a woman gets you and you got a six pack, man, don't come, don't think that two years later you're going to have this pot belly. Don't <laughs> right. do that. Facts. You know what I mean? For a woman, do that. You know, like if you wear, man, like sometimes you just got to take down to the bare minimum and know and appreciate and be secure in your beauty. You got to, that confidence, once again, confidence, ambition is something like you, if you ask me, attracts me. Your energy also attracts me. If you're nice, you're sweet. And I ain't saying you got to be sweet and you got to make me pies and all that shit. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? But I'm saying it's like you, if you got good energy and you pour into me like I'm pouring into you or whatever, I don't care about your age. I don't. When I met Cynthia, like she was older than me or whatever and stuff like that. And like I said, what was I attracting before her? I went with a much older lady because she was what attracted me at that time. I met her on a dating show, but I ain't expected it to be what we did, but we got to know each other and that's what I, we chose each other. Was it Steve Harvey's? It was Steve Harvey's show. Yeah. And I ain't expect that even going on that. Like I could have chose, I, I went on there thinking, okay, well, this is gonna be fun. She don't need help with this because she's beautiful. Mm. But when they asked me to go on the show, whatever, one of Steve Harvey's producers, cause I know Steve, asked me, hey, would you come on the show and you know, uh, would you, uh, come on to try and date one of the real housewives of Atlanta. My first question was like, well, which one? You know right, saying? of course, of course. <laughs> which, which one? Right. And she said, Cynthia, I was familiar with Cynthia. I'm like, yeah, I'll do it, absolutely. You know, she seems cool, fun, 
Mm-hmm. Never expected anything like that. I mean, she's beautiful. But so I'm saying it's like for women of a certain age, or whatever, don't think that it's over because you already are putting yourself behind the eight ball. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I'm 53, man. I feel like with y'all in y'all 30s or something like that. 30, 34. 30 for y'all, young mm-hmm. man. I can hang with you, dog. I can. I feel like you know you you gonna attract way more women than me, but I'm gonna attract some women. You know I what I mean? It, yeah. I feel like I can rock with you. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's just me and my confidence. And I know I ain't the best looking dude in the world, but I take care of myself and I feel young. I feel effervescent. I feel like I can run the world. Even from now, I feel like even though I'm 53, you can call me old. And I tell people all the time, they say, oh, look at the old man. I'm like, you wish you could look like this when you get 53 years old. You better hope that you look like this when you get <laughs> I just, Straight up. Right. And I'm not saying I'm gorgeous or whatever, but I feel gorgeous on the inside. That's my confidence. So what I'm telling the ladies out there is feel confident. When you feel confident, you feel like you love yourself, man, other people are going to see that, and that energy is going to pick up. It's going to resonate. Don't be desperate. Just know and wait for the right person to come along because – you ain't, we ain't got time to waste, man. We don't. That's very encouraging. And uh, I'm glad you said that because I do think as women get older, you know, a lot of what they concern themselves with is just beauty. Mm-hmm. But it's other, now don't get me wrong, you, you know, still, like you said, hit the gym, maintain beauty. But it is other things that an older woman possesses that a younger woman just just wouldn't you have. Know, man, wisdom. Exactly. I can talk to them about the world. I mean, mm-hmm. like, I, I, I'm not, and, and that's another thing for me. Like, you, the intelligence is so big for me. Yeah. If I meet, if I did meet somebody who was, you know, which I wouldn't date somebody, like I said, my daughter's 24, 50, so she would have to be more than half, you know, uh, between our ages. Gotcha. I think it's like, uh, so 19, so she got to be 10, 11 years older than my daughter, you know, because that's more than half uh, between the two of us, whatever. So if she's 34, 35 years old, but she ain't mature and she ain't intelligent, I'm talking about worldly intelligence, mm. like not just knowing what's going on on Instagram. And looking right. at little blogs on the shade right. room, nothing against the shade room and all those other things. But you know, you know what's happening on CNN right now, MSNBC. You know what's happening, even <laughs> Fox. You know what's happening in the world. Can we have a conversation? That is, women of that certain age, you know, they know what's happening in the world. They're big in politics. They care about what's going on uh, in society. They know who what Roe v. Wade is. <laughs> right, right, <laughs> you know right. what I mean? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, 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 I'm telling you, I, I, right. I dated a woman who got stopped. And once again, um, was asked about Roe v. Wade. She answered the question. And then her next question to me after was like, what's Roe v. Wade? And I'm like, ugh, this ain't going to work. <laughs> mm. This ain't going to work. Right. Because I'm like, as a, that's, that's what I'm saying. That's a maturity, man. So that, But that's for me. You know what I mean? Yeah. I need more than just your beauty. I need your energy. I need your intelligence. I need your smarts. I need all that type of stuff. And so for women, like you said, they can offer that. That sometimes, that's... There are a lot of smart, beautiful women. I always got to preface myself because you say the wrong thing, bro. All of a sudden, they they take it out of context. (laughs) And I'll be like, Mike Hill said that older, like young dudes, young women in their 20s and 30s are dumb as hell. They don't know anything. All they got is beauty and lashes. I didn't say that. So I'm saying it's like, (laughs) for the most part, you'll see that older women are ready for to settle down while younger women may feel like, oh, I got way more options. I get somebody to take care of. A lot of times, not all the time, but a lot of times. Yeah. You, so, you actually made me uh, made me think of this because you mentioned the you know young women looking at Instagram. Mm-hmm. So I'm just I'm just curious, uh, especially you know with your past relationship being high profile. What what's your un, like what's your just general take on social media and as it impacts relationships? Do you uh-huh. think that's is it just kind of it is what it is? We got to deal with it as a part of it, or is it something that now you may look um, look to stay away from? It? No, it's, and that's another tool that it's it's a it's a it's a threat to relationships. It really is a huge threat. I'll be totally honest with you, man. Like, here's and and I'm being transparent, being real with you. You yeah, know, like I said, that. like I am a person who I will admit my flaws and my mistakes, right? And I don't know if I've ever said this before, but you know, it's one thing to stop cheating physically, right? It's another thing to continue to make somebody believe that you would. Interesting. You know what I mean? Yeah. So for me, and this is, you know, right before Cynthia or whatever, and it kind of, in, in a sense, in the beginning of our relationship, kind of like, I'm not, this is my first time admitting it, so this might this might be something, the one that goes viral or whatever. So leaning over into our relationship, you know, it's always residue, right? Always residue in a relationship. You start a relationship, 
and you, especially if you're a public figure or whatever, you could be, okay, I don't cheat no more, I don't do this physically, I ain't gonna do nothing with nobody else, but you got, you establish all this on social media, people in your DMs and you flirting. I told you, I've always been a flirt. That's one of the things I had to stop doing. I had to stop flirting when I'm in a relationship. But, um, so somebody could be in your DMs and you've established these communications that you ain't never seen these person, people. They just seen you pictures, seen things, all like that. And you start, you know, Twitter or Instagram fingers go to work and you flirt back, she say something, you say something else and everything like that. And that might cross over into other relationships and it has to stop. If you don't stop it, it could be, that's a form of cheating. If you're emotionally cheating or if you like saying things that uh, you wouldn't want your woman to say to a man on Instagram, then you're doing, you're wrong. So in that case, not with Cynthia, not with Cynthia, but with, with the, you know, partially the beginning, like I said, but with other things after I stopped physically cheating, it was like, that was a big issue for me. That was an issue with me when I, when it came to the judge. It was an issue. It was like, you know, she got into my DMs and saw something or whatever. And like I'm saying, this flirting or whatever. Didn't know these women, didn't talk to them or whatever. It was just like it was because it was a temptation. So social media, I've always said, is one of the best inventions in the world. And it's one of the worst inventions in the world. Yeah. Best because it can make people feel connected, connected, closeness. We mm -hmm. can get a lot more things done. Uh, when it comes to the social injustice that's happened over the last couple of years, this is the only reason that we've gotten things done in this country because of that, because True. the world comes together. But it's also the worst because everybody has an opinion. People believe anything they see on social media. And there's no it's a lot of hate, no accountability, no 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 policing of it or whatnot. Mm -hmm. People can make up things. Somebody made up some stuff like, and, and that's the problem. Like somebody a couple of years ago made up a rumor that I was sexting with somebody on social media and it was from an account that had no name pretty much <laughs> so it wasn't like you can just like okay go to this person's house and like i can sue this person or whatever i had to do some my lawyer had to do digging and all that type of stuff like i had to threaten laws I'm like i'm not sexting with this person mm. i have sex before this, 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 this say that. <laughs> right. i have done this before <laughs> i have but i wasn't with this person <clears throat> and trying to make it seem like i was doing that and cheating on cynthia and that wasn't the case and, I, and, and it became this big thing, issue, and of course, obviously, because of my reputation, people automatically believe that, right? So to answer your question, yeah, it has an effect because there is more temptation that's out there. And that's what we was talking about earlier when it came to how's the difference between how did the people in their, who got married in their 40s and 50s and 60s mm -hmm. and their 70s, how did they last when people these days aren't even getting married or they're getting divorced quicker and they, 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 they're, 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 their marriages aren't lasting yeah. as quick because that's part of it. There's more options and a lot of temptations out there and there's different ways to get in touch with somebody if you did want to cheat. So I want to ask you this too because you and I grew up in a similar culture where you had pretty much, you know, men, you know, we grew up in the, the, the hunt, you know, like the, the men who taught us the hunt. Mm -hmm. You respected the hunt, you know. We high five the hunt, yep, yep. Right. you know. And we were taught, matter of fact, if you couldn't hunt, you were weak. You were weak. You were, if yeah. you couldn't hunt, if you couldn't get women, you were this and that. I would even tell Ryan, it was crazy. I had an uncle, my, a legendary uncle, mm. when it came to getting women. Mm. He when he moved to Atlanta, it was he has he had one another legendary story where like he came to Atlanta for a weekend, went out, experienced just the women. I, a few clubs, literally, didn't even go back to New York. He said he ended his lease, wow. got an apartment, never went back. Yeah. He fell <laughs> in love with the city that much. Wow. He would take me out to the uh, to the mall with him, and literally, yeah, pickup game. He yeah. would just go out there and it'll be just sparring, and he will pressure me as well mm -hmm. as like his young. I was almost like his bait, really. Mm -hmm. I was like his eleven year old, <clears throat> cute, innocent nephew. Right. Yep. And he would have me walking and walking up to these women, so on and so forth. And that actually carried out to when I was older. I actually remember telling Ryan this. I didn't realize, I know that had an effect on me because I remember telling Ryan, if I felt a beautiful woman walk by that I knew was beautiful, walk by me, mm -hmm. you had and I it. didn't approach her, yep. I almost felt like you, you scared. Yep. Yeah. Like, like you almost, yeah. you almost <laughs> feel like, like you scared of oh, pussy. you just scared. That's huh? what they would say. Oh, so yeah. you're just, <laughs> so you just going to do that. Yep. Mm -hmm. So you're just going to do that. You're mm -hmm. you just not even going to go up there and talk to her. Mm -hmm. And I remember I used to have that voice in the back of my head. Yep. So, like, as you as a man who obviously have not even acquired success, which makes it easier, mm. and 
you put yourself in this position now where you, I mean, you could, it's, you, you, you got a net now. It's not even no fishing pole. Mm. How did you actually put yourself in a position? These last two marriages, cheating was an issue. How did you truly reform from cheating? I mean, it was, it was, it was I'm, I'm not saying the temptations weren't there, mm. but you have to make a commitment. You have to have an understanding. Okay. Like, and you're right. I was taught that if you didn't, and this is, once again, I take full accountability. I always got to say that. Accountability, there's no excuse for what I'm doing. But I was taught that if I didn't, like you, that I wasn't being a man. That I was, a, that you are scared of, you know, vagina. Right. That, man, she right, man, just hit it, you know. I remember one story when I was a kid, man. I, uh, I told this in the book, too. Uh, I was like nine years old, and I went with my dad to this, sh we call it a shot house. He was going to get his liquor and all that stuff like that. I had on some shorts, nine years old, didn't know anything about sexuality. And this man walked over, and he started rubbing my legs, right? And he's like, oh, boy, you got some nice legs. You got, like, girl legs. And I'm like, I just remember this, right? And my dad's right there. My dad, and I'm letting him do it because I don't know any better, right? Nine years old, right? And my dad's like, Man, don't let that man rub your legs. Don't do that, blah, blah, blah. You know, if it's a man, don't, don't you ever let a man rub. And I, so he said, man, tell that man to get off you. And I said, get off me. So I told him to get off me. Five minutes later, there was this woman who was there. And she came up. She's like, yeah, he does have nice legs. And I'm, I'm really being sexually assaulted <laughs> right. by right. these grown people, right, in front of my dad. And this woman comes over. And she starts like, yeah, he got some really nice legs. He got some really strong legs, whatever. And I did it. I'm thinking, okay, what applied to him applies to her. Mm. So I said, oh, get off me. You don't touch my legs. And my dad said, no. If a woman touches you, let her do what she wants. Let her do what she wants to to you. Wow. A lesson. And I always wanted to please my dad, right? Because mm. he's like this manly man or whatever. Once again, <clears throat> no excuse. Still take accountability. When you get older, you should know better or whatever. But this is the way I was raised. Growing up in a certain neighborhood, women... Girls like me in the neighborhood. They thought I was cute or whatever. Girls wanted to have sex with me or whatever. Uh, and I would, like, if I said no, oh, you scared of blah, blah, blah. You need to hit. I'm so, I, I had lost my virginity before I wanted to lose my virginity, bro. I mean, this, these are traumas that you, that you go through. So you oh, grow yeah. up thinking this. Even when you're in relationships. It's your boys, pressure. You're Lots around the pressure. wrong boys around. You're around the homeboys, whatever. Somebody likes you, man, go, man, you, need, you ain't gonna hit that, bro. She fine. So to answer your question, when you got all that coming at you and stuff like that over a period of time, you have to find out who you are, once again. Yeah. Become a man. Like I said, I ain't start stepping into my manhood until like five or six years ago when I realized that some of the things I was doing in the past, not just the physical cheating, but I can't emotionally cheat either, and I had to stop doing that and wean myself off of it. But, man, it's tempting as hell because it's right there. It's in your face. And what's crazy is like when you go into a relationship that's a high profile relationship, you get a whole lot more followers. You get a lot of women coming at you and a lot of women will start off like, I'm a big fan of Cynthia's, but if blah, 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 and they start just unsolicited sending you pictures, sending you things wow. and stuff like that, man, it's like, wow. and it's like. They just want to, they just want to come in to destroy. Yeah. And, but, but it's like, they want to come and destroy, but it's also Tim, but it's also stupid if you engage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's and that's what you got to real, but like, as like we men sometimes can be really weak, man. We yes. really can be very weak, especially when it's right in your face. Cause you know, I remember this is a joke, like somebody, a man be like, look on this show. Well, ain't nobody looking. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Nobody gonna find out. Ain't nobody <laughs> yeah. know. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So this is just real talk. And once again, there's no excuse for it. Full accountability. I had to learn that I can't, even if nobody's going to know, I can't do it cause I know. And it's going to hurt me. And eventually it's going to affect my relationship. So if you really are in love with the person you're with, you really care about that person's feelings, fuck how that girl feels. Mm -hmm. Forget how she, how you're going to make her feel if you turn her down. Because that was also the things like, you know, I've had women come at me and say, oh, you don't find me cute, blah, blah, blah. You're not going, you ain't going to say hello, blah, Manipulation. blah. Manipulation. Yeah. Doing yeah. all that type They're of stuff. so good at that. Making it seem like, and, or somebody that you used to mess with, oh, you with somebody else, you don't care about me no more, we can't even be friends. And like, Oh, you to, can't even just send a text back? You can't even send yep. a text back. <laughs> yeah. You can't even do that. Oh, you can't return for all calls. Like, and you start feeling like, oh, man, you start caring about the other person's feelings, right. not that you're going to do no, anything with that person. It, no, I can send a take it, back. It, it, it ain't yeah. even like that. And, and the ego gets involved. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, no, I'm a man. Like, she ain't got me by the balls and all that. All these right. emotions come 
But when you become a man, man, like my, one of my favorite uh, 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 scriptures is First Corinthians. When I be, when I was a child, I thought as a child and stood as a child. I spoke as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. So when you become a man and you're in a real committed relationship, like I was with Cynthia, when I was committed, when we got engaged, before we got engaged, when we said this is for real, that we are together. Like I said, there was the carryover in the beginning mm -hmm. that I had to get rid of the residue, right? I said, I gotta stop this. And it still was tough. And it was still like engaging with somebody every now and then, or somebody would send something, you put a heart up because it's like, okay. Then it becomes almost like an image thing for somebody that's in my position too, because it's almost like you still gotta have female fans yeah. in a way. Right, and you get that, and you that fame and that stuff like that. You're just trying to appease them in a way without disrespecting the person, but it's still encouraging and it's still engaging and it's still wrong. Mm. And you had to learn that and just put yeah. it all aside and let it go, man. So it's tough, bro. It is so tough, but you have got to realize that if you're with a woman and you say you love her and you're in love with her, you care about her feelings overall. Fuck what they think over here. Mm. Excuse my language, but that's the way you got to do it. I agree. You got to be like, yo, uh, uh, but if you're going to be, you're going to send it and I tell you not to send it, don't do it, whatever. Now you send it and you don't want me to engage. I'm going to look at it. I ain't going to lie to you. <laughs> I'll look at it. I mean, I'm still a man. It's like going to a strip club, right? <laughs> right. You're like, look, you know, I'm still a man. You still, just like a woman. If a woman, don't tell me women can say all they want to, man, but if a man... Was it not? I'm not talking about dick pics. I'm talking about if a man was fun, like the, the TikTok dude. Yeah. You know, TikTok dude. You know, yeah. your woman said that, oh, you know him for a reason. Not that she was with him. Right. <laughs> but she right. thought this thing was she was, yeah, she was right. looking. Right, right, yeah, right, she right, was right. looking. She, she was, was looking. looking. She was looking. She's looking. looked before. Yes. She's and, seen and his videos she before. Lusted, and as there's a, a fact, reason yeah. why she was looking. <laughs> right. Don't think that because you're in a relationship behind you, be like, uh, Tasha, honey, look, look, what's his name? Okay. You know, she might not be following him, but she know how to get to his page. Yep. Right? Yeah, Facts. yeah. And Facts. if he started sending her DMs or whatever and sending pictures, she'll be like, look, but she might not she might not engage, but she ain't gonna discourage the pictures from being sent. Yeah. I'm just saying, bro, it's it's tough because we're human and that's what people have to realize. But it's a fight and it's a struggle every day, and I'm still fighting it and still learning and still growing into my manhood. First of all, people, I want listen. We gotta get like, but look, we gotta get Mike Hill on the live show. Yeah, if y'all wanna, yeah. wanna see Mike Hill on the live show, I want y'all to put the word "live" in the comments mm. right now. We get enough lives, I'm gonna figure out how to make this happen. What city you live in, by the way, Mike? Los Angeles, L.A. Oh man, but I'm back in I'm back in L.A. I mean Atlanta all the time, man. So okay, yeah, good. Yeah, okay, yeah, I, think, I, I think it's possible, y'all. Yeah, we'll I think it's it possible, man. But listen, <laughs> I enjoyed the hell out of this conversation, Mike. I knew it was gonna be a good show, but you actually. This was, a, it was actually better than I even thought, man. And hope, open. Love, and hope, man. Which is Thank the best you, part. Thank you. I appreciate it, man. Thanks for allowing me to be open. I, like I said, I am I may not be everybody's cup of tea. Some people just don't like tea, man. But I just <laughs> love being myself. And I might not say everything that people wants me to say, but I say what I feel needs to be heard. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm coming out of my, 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 my mouth, and it's authentic. And it's transparent. It's real. I'm flawed. I have a lot of mistakes. I made a lot of mistakes in the past, but I'm growing and learning. And I think that's what we all can say. So there are things in, in everybody's life that you got that's an issue that you have to overcome. My sins are no bigger or greater than yours. So if I can give you grace, I just pray that people give me grace. But at the same time, I've learned to love myself and to give myself the grace and know that I'm growing into the man that I want to be. And that man, it was a lot of accountability I heard from you um, throughout the entire episode. And um, that's one thing I could respect the most and everybody has a different pace of growth, you know, and I think, I mean, one of the biggest things I think you said was, you know, you were, a, you called yourself a male up until these last few years, yeah. you know, and, you know, I think every man is growing at the, a different pace. And I think it's, it's, it's very important to be honest with yourself about where you are so you can know when to, cause I think if anything, you let me know if I'm right about this. Mm -hmm. I think being a man, a real, the, the definition of it, when especially how you described it, going from male to man, is probably one of the most important prerequisites before you go about actually taking a woman's hand in marriage. Oh, yeah, yeah, you have to be. You have to be a man. Like I said, you have to be a king. So you can be, we, there are a lot of men walking around here thinking that they're men, or they're a man. They got a penis between their legs, which makes them a man. 
my guy, um, what's the actor? I can't think. He made he wrote a book, Male to Man, right? So male versus man. So you were you were born a male, right? You know, not to get into the whole transition, right, right, right. but you're born a male, right? As a man, you don't start growing into your manhood until you do manly things. That's why I said the first Corinthians 13 channel. We 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 do things as a child, but you put away childish things when you become a man. Now you can still have fun and do chi- have a childlike behavior at times. But when it comes to being a man, you have to be a man. If you want to be a king, there comes a responsibility with being a king. There comes a responsibility with being a man. That is yeah. a title that is not taken lightly and not just given to anybody that's over the age of 21 with a penis between their legs, right? You have to grow into being a man. You have to learn what it's like or what it takes to be a man. That's why a woman will say, I need a man. I need a real or I want a man. She should say, I want a man. I want a real man. Yeah. Right, and it's not a boy, because there's a lot of fifty year old boys walking around, and a lot of forty year old boys. I was one of them, mm. walking around like a boy, doing things like that, and thinking like I was a good guy, did everything, work, did all, provide, and all that type of stuff like that, man. But when it came to certain things and aspects and emotions and whatnot, and understanding other people's emotions and their feelings, I, I had boy like behavior. I if was you a, could, if you could try to define. As, as briefly and as brilliantly as you could, what it is to actually be a man. Mm-hmm. Just so some of the men out there could even have some level, and the women, mm-hmm. could have some level of context about what it really looks like and means to be a man. Because I think I think we throw that out there a lot. Oh, he's not a man. You ain't a real man. That, that's mm-hmm. thrown out a lot. But what would you consider it to be to eventually to really be a man? Having an emotional aptitude to understand what it takes to live this life 100% authentically and effectively, especially in a relationship, to be able to pour into somebody else what they want you to pour in, what you're able and capable of pouring into them, right? And also putting away a lot of the things that we've been taught about being a man. Like we have to, basically sometimes we have to, we have to relearn what, it took, what I was taught, what you guys were taught, maybe the, the different generations. And this is one of the reasons why I actually put out the book. I didn't put out the book to try and sell a thousand, 10,000. I didn't try and put it on the New York Times bestsellers list. I, I put that, I didn't want to put that book out. Somebody told me I had to put that book out because it was going to help people. Because I wanted to show people the mistakes I was making along the way as I thought I was being a man. And what I learned as to, okay, this was being a boy. But, but what I learned and how I grew is being a man. So to answer your question, there's no real answer to it. It is what's inside you, but you know. You'll know it, you'll feel it, you'll recognize it. You'll re- and people around you will recognize that's a man. You know what I mean? And I'm not saying that you'd make mistakes because we're still a flawed. We will still go back and do things and do stupid shit. <laughs> we just do it, it just happens. I don't care how old you get. No matter how uh, much equity you've built up, all it takes is one mistake and they could tear a lot of the stuff down. I understand that. But recognizing, recognizing your mistakes also takes the steps of being a man, walking into the manhood, recognizing your flaws, recognizing that, hey, I want to get better. I need to get better. Not necessarily for the person that I'm with or my children or my family or my coworkers, in it, but for me. We, the self-evaluation part I keep telling y'all when he talks to, to other people, man, it starts here. It starts here within, man. I got to look yourself in the mirror. When I can look myself in the mirror and I can say these words, I know that I'm in a good space. If I can look myself in the mirror and I say, my conscience is clear and I got a conscience, bro. I hurt. When I hurt hate people, I know I've done it and it bothers me. But when I can look in the mirror and I can say my conscience is clear, I'm good. I really am. So that's the evaluation period, man. What can I do to continue to grow? Not just from a money standpoint, but even if you're on your job, being a man means like showing up on time, doing things when people ain't looking. How are you acting when people aren't looking? When people yeah. aren't around, to pat you, you you don't need pats on your back. You don't need people because that's just that should just come with the territory. You know what I mean? Like a woman, a man that takes care of his child, like, oh, I feed my, well, you're supposed to cheat, feed your damn child. Right. Hey, you don't need a pat on the back for that. That's what you're supposed to do. But are you feeding that person something that's going to help that little boy or that little girl grow? Not just not just being there and, and, and letting them play PlayStation all day or whatever. Mm-hmm. Oh, I bought them a PlayStation. That's being a, no, it's not being a parent. Being a parent is like, you know, 
being a man is growing into that and pouring in and making a difference in the community. So there's so many definitions of what it takes to be a man. But once again, you'll know when you look deep down inside yourself and ask yourself, do you feel like you're a man? Do you feel like you're a man? Or do you feel like you're growing into your manhood? That's the question that we all, especially black men, because we want to make society better. We need to make society better for the next generation coming up. And like I said, that's the reason I put that book out. I want you to see my pain that I caused other people. I want you to see the pain that I caused myself, the traumas that I went through, the issues and the mistakes that I made that I'm embarrassed about or ashamed of at one time that I want to show you, hey, these are the mistakes I made. You don't have to do the same thing. Just like the rappers, you see now they grow. That's why I like, I see, like, mm -hmm. that's why I love Jay-Z now. Jay-Z, hey, I made these mistakes. Yep. I'm doing this, this is how I'm, this is how I'm living now. Mm -hmm. People can grow, man, that's growing, growth is growing into a manhood. So once again, bro, find out what your definition of manhood is all about. Believe in it, know it, it's re real, and, and is, is it just helping you or is it helping others? I like that, that's a daily question. Are you a man or are you growing into your manhood? Mm -hmm. That's a daily yeah. question, yeah. fellas. Yeah. Listen, that one was for you. Mike Hill, people. Hey, look, hit that round of applause button line. Sure <laughs> Yo, Mike, that was uh, that was good, man. Thank Dude, you, bro. Very much appreciate it. Thank you so yeah. much, man. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. This is the best podcast I've ever done, bro. Yeah. You know, I'm going to tell you right now because this is like, that's real. That's like, fellas having these kind of conversations, we need to have these conversations. I Thanks. agree. got to have more often, brother. Yeah. I 100% agree, man. I appreciate you saying that. I appreciate you joining us. And I'm predicting with my magic crystal ball, this ain't gonna be your last time here. We're gonna, make, we're gonna make it pop off again and do it even better. But it's been a blessing having you, and it's been a blessing also having you guys tune into another episode. I wanna make sure everybody here is subscribed to the channel so you can make sure that you consistently get in this value because we only get better. That's it. Now, don't we forget about the, the event. We got an event <clears throat> that we're planning this fall. We want to, you know, make sure everybody knows exactly what's going on. We even want some feedback with some of our ideas. So, guys, you see that link. It'll say upcoming events. Click the link. Go ahead and send us your contact information so we can send you the information. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And, guys, for those of you that don't know and that's under rock, y'all here we teasing this live show. Every Monday and Wednesday night, at 8 p.m., we go live. Yeah. All right, so that's when you get involved in the conversation. We go ahead, we round table. It's fun. We have an amazing conversation, and we let our members chat, the members of this platform who help us find the guests, who help us decide the topics. They go about chatting in there as well. We bring them into the conversation, and it is a joy. So make sure you put on your calendar that, that hardly initiative. We'll go live Monday and Wednesdays at 8 p.m., but listen, y'all already know. Hmm. Thank y'all for tuning in to another episode of Hardly Initiated. Yes. We are out. <laughs>